Hello. Well, this is going to be about the latest news from Syria. Dalma has fallen. Uh, here are some, here's a couple of clicks. And it looks like Assad's technique worked, doesn't it? As I speculated in my previous video, it does appear that it was indeed the Syrian army which had dropped some sort of noxious substance on the citizens of that unfortunate town. In a while, probably, there will be an American strike against Syria, just for the principle of the thing. I doubt it'll be a full-scale attack, probably more like the sort of limited missile uh, throwing which the Americans launched at the Shuairat base in 2017 after another chemical attack attributed to the Syrian regime. I should think that Assad's army will be slipping quietly away from a few sensitive targets like air bases and military installations until the fuss has died down and Trump will run his little bombing campaign and face will be saved. Of course, you may all be watching this from the safety of your bomb shelters after an American and Russian clash. But if I really thought that would happen, I'd be out down the local pub getting smashed and not bothering with this video. So let's proceed. I said in my last video that Assad had a choice about Rauta. He either pursues a policy of mass killing, uh, which might or might not hit the Islam army, backed, by the way, the Islam army is backed by sympathetic elements in Saudi Arabia, just in case you didn't know that. Or Assad could send in his men on a house-to-house -house mission in an area where the Islam army has had seven years to embed themselves and to prepare bunkers, booby traps and the roundup of civilian hostages and shields. In such a battle, the exceedingly precious, well-trained and loyal, but frankly, not that numerous Syrian special forces, the Panther Brigade, would suffer high casualties, as would the civilians, only it would be bullets, shrapnel and fire that would kill them rather than sarin or chlorine or whatever it is. The Panther Brigade have already suffered substantial losses in the original Eastern Rauta battle, which pushed the rebels back into Dalma. Assad couldn't lose any more. Although in my earlier video I didn't discount the possibility that the rebels were capable of gassing <coughs> the civilians <coughs> in uh, uh, amongst which they had their base, and it could still turn out, but I had a suspicion it wasn't the rebels this time, simply because of the strategic weight on Assad's side. And on balance, I reckon it really was Assad what done it. And I base that assumption on the fact that the rebels have surrendered and left Dalma. They were well burrowed into Dalma and they would have given up only because they could see that Assad was both serious in his determination to get rid of them and completely unconcerned by what the international community would say about such action or indeed how the international community would react. And that was of course because no one, no one wants a scrap with the Russians. And this is the story so far. Here's Syria. Bit of a mess, isn't it? Here's Damascus. And this area in pink is now under the control of Assad. But you can see there are great big lumps there, sort of missing. And this is East Rauta, which is where Dalma is. And now this bit is pink as well. So you see Assad is filling in the sections. This part here is still in the hands of rebels. And this is in the hands of Hezbollah. It's from these 
hills here that Hezbollah launches attacks into Israel. This is Israel here. That's the Sea of Galilee, that little blue thing there. You can see how close everything is and how vulnerable Israel is to attack from these areas. And I'll discuss this uh, a bit later on. Dalma is now full of Russian soldiers, by the way, not Syrian, Russian. Surya, Moscow, Surya, Moscow, Surya, Surya, Surya. Uh, demonstrating to the world just how far the Russians are showing themselves in support of Assad's regime and how embedded they are in that country. And also perhaps to stop the Syrian army butchering the locals whom they might have seen as traitors and supporters of the Saudi insurgents. To turn the knife even further, Eastern Rauta, by the way, has also had a visit from Ali Akbar Velyati. Yep, the very one, the special advisor to Ayatollah Khamenei, Iran's religious supremo. If this isn't a slap in the face to Saudi Arabia, and indeed to all the Sunni Muslims in the area, I don't know what is. The local Sunni will have got the message that in Syria they may have the majority, but they don't have the supremacy. And that's how things are going to stay, at least for the foreseeable future. As for the Islam army, they have, so far as I've read, headed north and will probably end up supported by Turkey, who's conducting a campaign of ethnic cleansing against the Kurds in the northern part of Syria around Afrin. Now, why should Russia be so enthusiastic about protecting Syria? Well, it all goes back to the Russian obsession, and I have to say it's not an unreasonable obsession, with getting a warm water port. Most of Russia is snowbound for a good deal of the year. Most of Russia's ports are icebound for most of the year. And Putin is currently known to be spending a lot of Russia's financial resources, which are limited, you know, on building a fleet of ice-going warships in his attempts to capitalise on the fact that the ice in the Northern Hemisphere is, these days, not quite as thick as it used to be. The Russians take access to the high seas very seriously, as uh, most countries do. It's also why Russia was so determined to grab the Crimea. At least that gave them unimpeded access to the Black Sea and thence through the Bosphorus to the Mediterranean. So this is the big picture. Here's Moscow and north of this is the North Pole. Uh, there is some water up there, but it's icebound a lot of the time. Over here, the east, you know, the Russian steppes, Siberia, Mongolia. You can't really get out that way. And of course, over here, uh, Poland and the Ukraine. Here's the border. Now, well, that's not straight. Right, there's the border. So you can see, if Russia wants to get access to the seas that are warm all year round, it's got to go out this way. So that's why Russia made such an effort to get hold of the Crimea, because the, the port here, Sebastopol, that's where they get their ships out. And then here, this is the Bosphorus, they have to negotiate that, and then they're out into the Mediterranean. But getting back to that port is time consuming. So they do want a Mediterranean port. Let's see. There's the Crimea and there's Tartus in Syria. And that gives them a base uh, from which they can at least sail the Mediterranean, if not dominate it. Uh, they'd like to do that too, of course. But it does give them a base and you can understand why they want this base. It's perfectly reasonable. Uh, the, the only problem is that in doing so, they're having to prop up the Syrian regime.
They've had a base in Tartus in Syria since 1971. They used to call it a support point, but they gave up the pretense after 2017. By establishing facilities there, Russia got round the military chokehold imposed by NATO and American forces on Russia's southwestern flank. Tartus isn't big enough uh, to host the Admiral Kuznetsov, the aircraft carrier, but it is big enough to allow Russia to support its own vessels, to supply its own troops and to threaten military action if necessary in the eastern Mediterranean. And there's no way the Russians are going to give that up. Just as a sort of afterthought, I have noticed a lot of comment on the web about Israel wanting rid of Assad. I don't think so. The man is a monster and despite some argument here, I am not going to stop describing him that way because that's what he is. And he runs a monstrous regime, but it's a stable regime. The last thing Israel needs is more chaos on their northern borders. Even if Assad were to allow Hezbollah which, as we all know, is backed by Iran, to do some skirmishing on the border. Syria can be attacked by Israel and punished for it, like Israel did a few days ago, bombing one of uh, the air bases there. But if Syria is in lots of little pieces, such action would be completely ineffective. I'm not an Israeli strategist, but that's the way I see it. And I can't see why anyone would think Israel wants a war over there. Well, except for the people who'd be inclined to blame Israel for anything, whatever.